going to discuss the customization of the in and out labels within Logic. And nobody likes to be labeled, but sometimes it just helps you figure out what the hell's going on. And typically we'll name the ins and outs of our audio interface labels, but we can even go further than that and label a bus, say reverb, so that when you're sending a track to that bus, you can just find it by the bus that has reverb in parentheses instead of being like, oh, what's going on? I don't know what bus it is. Customizing input and output labels in Logic is actually very helpful. Open up Options, Audio, and then click on I.O. Labels, and you'll see a list now of all the inputs and outputs that Logic sees, of course, depending upon your audio interface. Uh, here I'm using the built-in audio, so I only have a few ins and a few outs. You'll also see a list of all the available buses that Logic can see. You'll notice how the first group of channels is mono. You'll have input one and two, and the second group is outputs, um, output one and two, and then the third group is all the stereo inputs, and then the fourth is the, all the stereo outputs. Um, depending, again, on what audio interface you're using, you will probably see more um, inputs, outputs, and stereo ins and outs as well. Then you can take a look at the next couple of columns here. The next column is the provided by driver column. Here you can specify, um, you can tell Logic to take the input and output name directly from the driver of your audio interface. So for instance, say you're using the Motu 828 MK2, the Motu console that is included with the MK2 actually allows you to specify the input and output names directly in the console. And once you do that, if you come back into Logic and click the circles for all the ins and outs in the provided by driver column, essentially what you're doing is telling Logic to take the driver names directly from that console. And this is sometimes a good idea and better than specifying your own names in here in Logic. That is mainly because if you specify all the names in the Motu console, those will be universal to any sequencer you might use on this computer. You then have the option to specify your own user long and short names for each input and each output. So for instance, if input one was always to be mic and input two was always going to be guitar, you could specify those here. So if you were to go over this audio track here and click on input, you can see already that input one is selected and in parentheses you see mic, which is the input name that you specified in the I.O. settings. The other uh, great aspect of using the I.O. labels and creating your own is mainly uh, with concern to the buses. Say for instance bus 1 is always going to be a reverb bus. You can click the user circle and type in reverb for the long name. So from now on whenever you want to send to that reverb bus you just click on send bus and in parentheses you'll see reverb. So you'll know, oh, bus one is reverb. You won't be searching and say, hey, I don't remember what, what I called that bus, and you have to open the environment and check. It's just an easier way to do it. Slay bus.